The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners working across Australian industry with key links internationally. Technology is changing rapidly, uh, new ideas are coming forward and the difficulty is being able to adapt to them in a consistent way, appreciating what the assumptions are that are, that are critical to the development of these any new ideas is absolutely vital and recognising that different organisations and areas may select a different set of assumptions to analyse a similar, similar problem, it is important that work is done on bringing those assumptions uh, together in a consistent way and actually translating them into actions which uh, can uh, relate to the better efficiency and, uh, of traffic management and also the better use of infrastructure and better investment in, in infrastructure itself. This will require research and, and more meaningful applications so that we can arrive at solutions that will benefit the community as a whole. In New South Wales, we're talking about things like uh, automated trains, with driverless trains on the new metro line. We're talking about door-to-door -door delivery of people through public transport, and that enables a greater range of use by people who perhaps may not have been able to access public transport in the past, now being able to access public transport for their needs and providing that greater level of customer service. So it's not just about how we as road agencies are able to design roads and design transport networks, but also how we can respond to our customers' needs in doing so. And I think that's part of the excitement of technology. In this project, we've had the opportunity to work with a number of our partners to identify specific ways that these changes in technology will impact on the investment decisions of transport infrastructure. So the majority of the studies that have been done worldwide actually indicate that, especially in the interim period and transition period, uh, driverless vehicles would make uh, congestion a lot worse on our streets. What that means is there's a greater demand for transport. Uh, uh, car use potentially becomes cheaper. Uh, we've got electric vehicles. We don't have to worry about uh, fuel prices anymore. Uh, people who have more access to uh, driverless vehicles uh, um, don't have to worry about parking anymore. So essentially the demand goes up. So we think that connected and autonomous vehicles uh, will actually have some benefits around being more consistent in their behaviour. Um, so things like reaction time, so cars may be able to follow a little bit more closely because the reaction time of a technology may be more consistent and maybe slightly better than uh, human beings. Uh, the fact that the vehicles can essentially talk to each other also enables them potentially to travel a little bit more closely together. Things like behaviour of the vehicles and how it drives, so by accelerating and braking in a more smooth manner and a more consistent manner may also increase capacity. And also things like um, merging behaviours, so quite often we have people who are aggressive mergers and that creates a, a bit of a bottleneck behind them. So by having a more consistent merging behaviour from the technology that might actually um, provide some benefits. Uh, there are a number of things that, that may provide small benefits individually but uh, add up to be um, reasonably significant benefits. So we're looking at those and, and what they mean for the road network. One thing that really concerns us is if people make the decision to have privately owned autonomous vehicles or automated vehicles, that will actually increase the amount of vehicle travel on, on the roads and there's the potential for a lot of dead running or sort of secondary um, impacts on congestion. So all of a sudden you have somebody dropped off at work, um, that vehicle then is left to either go and find somewhere to park, potentially on the outskirts of the city, or to continue to sort of travel around the city with no other people in it. So it's really important for us to try and understand and have the conversation with the public about the impacts that we will see once all of these technologies hit. One of the areas that the research has identified as a major area of risk is parking. A lot of investment, a lot of money goes into that. And they also have a very long lifespan. Those buildings can't be repurposed as well. And given the different scenarios of ownership in the case of technology being autonomous vehicles might have different implications for parking under a scenario of private ownership um, of an autonomous vehicle might increase demand for parking space. Um, conversely, if we end up that autonomous vehicles enable more sharing of vehicles, then uh, there might be a decreased demand for parking, but an increased demand for pick up and drop off spaces, say the value of the curb. It's really an unknown at the moment, 
part of it is actually working out that um, we don't know what that future might be, carving out what we might like that future to be and what the technology actually enables. Changes in technology, autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles, are going to be highly favourable for public transport. Certainly, we've got it already with high-speed rail and metro systems, but it's going to go into the roads with the equivalent of light rail and these kind of small buses, they are shuttles and they fit together beautifully and complete a total public transport system that'll be far more popular than anything we've had before. I think the most important thing we can do into the future is to trial demonstrations that can show how you can integrate a full system down a corridor into neighbourhoods, into city centres, so that you can see all of the different fabrics of the city and how they fit together in terms of transport demand. I think it's going to shift because this technology makes buses and trams and trains far more attractive and efficient. I think we'll have a lot less need for road capacity in the future, far less need for parking. So a lot of the standard things of planning for roads and parking into the future will be challenged by this kind of technology. It is going to open up possibilities we hadn't dreamed of for making our cities far more attractive places to live in, but far less car dependent in a private sense. So the key thing here is that for, for many decades, not a lot has changed in transport and we've been able to rely on our past experiences to predict how things are going to go in the future to some degree. But now that we're making decisions about infrastructure that will last 80 to 90 years, we're going to see a lot of technology changes between now and then. So it's a really important project to look at how those technology changes can be considered when we're conceiving of these longer term infrastructure development projects. At first look, it appears like these areas could actually produce risks for our system. But when you take a deeper look, which we've been able to do in this project, they actually identify a number of opportunities to provide a greater level of service, a greater level of safety, and a greater level of leveraging investment into our transport infrastructure.